Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Pro and Hurricane HD video blog from Memorial Day 2013. So glad you could join me today to check out this video of what's going on in the tropics. First, we'll take a look at sea surface temperature anomalies, those departures from normal out here across the Atlantic. Wow, they are running significantly above the long-term average, even across the Caribbean Sea starting to go above that average, as is the Gulf of Mexico warming up significantly now with the subtropics up here in the northern latitudes cooler than the long-term average that means as i've talked about that we should see a pretty active season out here across the atlantic basin with a majority of the more intense hurricanes focused probably in this region this year last year the more intense hurricanes were up here in the subtropics it was quite a distorted pattern compared to what we're used to seeing Meanwhile, in the Pacific, the equatorial region still showing quite a bit of cold water compared to average. Some of that very cold right in here. A result of strong high pressure over the Pacific. Uh, draw a little H in there for high pressure. Keeping those trade winds blowing right along. Stronger than normal, keeping the uh, waters moving to the west. That upwelling, and that's what it is. You get a strong high out here, a little bit stronger than normal and the trade winds around that high blow like this and it keeps those waters moving to the west blowing away from South America you upwell cold water the water below the surface is cold you're able to mix that water along the equatorial region and it cools off conversely in the Atlantic the high has been much farther to the north and it's been weaker so your tr trade winds down below to the southern uh, extent of the latitudes here have been weaker therefore this water has been able to warm compared to the long-term average there's a basic lesson in why that happens at least a very simplistic overview actual sea surface temperatures across the basin 26 degrees celsius is what we're looking for as the relative minimum threshold for tropical cyclone formation sometimes you can get them over colder water than that but there's a bunch of different processes that are involved Normally we look for 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 Celsius, and there's the line. So you see that a good deal of the Atlantic Basin, certainly all of the Caribbean here and part of the Gulf, most of it, is warm enough for development. Looking in the Gulf of Mexico, the only areas that are not at roughly 80 degrees is the Northeast Gulf right here, and a small section over here of Gulf of Mexico water off the coast of Texas. This is also caused by upwelling you get those strong southeasterly winds blowing through the Yucatan Channel, coming around the backside of that Bermuda High, and you blow the water away from the land, and colder water comes up from below to replace that. That's called upwelling, and that's why the water is colder just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula here, in case you didn't know that. That happens just about every year. All right, so what's going on out in the tropics? Well, we have... Invest area 92E right here. Pretty high potential that this will become a tropical cyclone in the next couple of days. You can see more organized convection or shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it today along and near the southern coast of Mexico and portions of Guatemala and El Salvador here in the eastern Pacific. You can also tell that the upper level winds are getting more favorable in this region. They are curved clockwise as opposed to being stretched out like you see over here or right here. This is indicative of strong upper level winds going in one direction. Whereas with this system in the eastern Pacific 92E, the winds are much more clockwise in the upper levels with an anticyclone sitting over the top, a big area of high pressure trying to develop over this region, giving this system something to develop into the air has to go up and then spread out evenly for the process to continue as efficiently as possible hopefully it won't do that and therefore this will stay weak but you see these reds here these colder cloud tops that's what that indicates heavy rainfall from these systems even as they are in their fledgling stages so people in the region need to consider that just because it's not a hurricane or even a tropical storm yet doesn't mean that it'll be without problems heavy rainfall freshwater flooding is indeed a problem some of the model guidance output 
This is the GFDL model, wanting to take it up into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Other models are into Mexico and then back out again, or just paralleling the coast. Right in here is a gray line, hard to see, I'm sure. That is the consensus model, sort of a poll, if you will, a straw poll of what do the other models think, and you kind of average them together. It's more complex than that, of course, but think of a consensus in a room full of people when you're trying to reach a decision about something. What is the consensus of the group? Well, that's what this consensus model is all about, for the most part, and it's suggesting a track slowly towards the Mexican coastline here, and again, that'll bring a lot of heavy rain to the region, and that cannot be understated enough that heavy rainfall from tropical cyclones is indeed a problem. This high ocean heat content relative to what you have in the open Pacific here, where there's virtually no ocean heat content, pretty good values right here in the Gulf of Tehuantepec, and that system will tap this moisture and wring it out over the land, giving that area a good dose of heavy rainfall. The global forecast system model, thought I'd show you this. Uh, here is the west coast of Mexico right here. There's our 92E disturbance. Uh, fairly weak low pressure area. This is 24 hours from this morning, so this will be valid on Tuesday morning. Here's Wednesday morning. You can see the system still fairly weak, but a prolific rainfall maker. I do want to keep emphasizing that we're not just talking about categories or if it's not a hurricane, we're not going to really pay much attention to it. That's hogwash. These systems, you know, you think about dumping 5 to 10, maybe 15 inches of rain in one location, depending on where that is, that can be a big problem. 72 hours from now, this will be valid, I guess, on Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm sorry. Probably going to have this system inland by then as a larger envelope of low pressure begins to set up over the Western Caribbean. There's the Yucatan Peninsula there just to outline what's what. And we might see something develop possibly in the Atlantic Basin side of things by the end of the week towards the start of the Atlantic hurricane season on Saturday. So we'll have to wait and see about that. You see this green is lower pressure. Uh, your typical pressure of 1012 to 1016 millibars is this yellow all through here. That's a typical sea level pressure. Anything on this side of the scale, in the greens and certainly down into the blues, is a typical indication of lower than average sea level pressure as you see here. And these different lines are the isobars indicating yet another step down, just like a topographic map would be in geography. So we'll watch this region, maybe something trying to develop with the overall unsettled pattern down in the eastern Pacific and across the landmass into the western Caribbean. All right, well that is a look at the tropics for your Memorial Day 2013. Thanks a lot for watching. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Always a privilege and an honor. I appreciate you being able to see these videos and hopefully understand what's going on a little bit better in Hurricane Pro and the iPad version, Hurricane HD. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.